What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by. Today's project is this Toro lawnmower that I picked off the curb for free and the problem is that the transmission for the self-propel doesn't seem to be working like it's supposed to. Sometimes the wheels will turn just fine and then suddenly stop. Let's take a good look at it, find out what's wrong with it and hopefully we can fix it. In this video we try and repair this mower, however it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. So in the last video on this mower, the left drive wheel did not want to roll forward and only backwards. We were able to figure out that the previous owner had taken the drive apart and didn't reinstall it correctly. Unfortunately, after getting it back together, we found out that the self-propel wasn't engaging correctly and that the transmission was more than likely the problem. Today we're going to take a closer look at it and see if we can save the transmission. Normally, when I work on a drive system, I typically drain the oil and gasoline from the mower just in case I have to lay it on its back. The reason is, I don't want to make a huge mess, but since this is a front wheel drive system, we might not have to lay it on its back. Out of habit though, I already drained everything earlier before filming just in case. So the plan is to remove the transmission as it will make filming a lot easier and if we have to work on it, it will already be off the deck. The first thing is to take off the wheels followed by the retaining clips, washers and drive gear. Now the first set is to hold on the drive and then after that the other set is to hold the transmission to the deck. Just be careful when doing this otherwise you are likely to lose any one of these pieces. Now when taking off the drive gear, take note as to which side faces outward. Otherwise you will have the same problem as we experienced in the previous video. Now depending how often the drive has been lubricated just be prepared to have grease all over these pieces. After we get done on this side we'll do the same to the other side. Next I'm going to point the deck upward that way I can remove the two screws that hold the belt guard to the deck. After that we're going to take off the belt from the transmission pulley and then disconnect the self propelled cable from the deck. This would also be a good time to replace the drive belt if you think it's worn out. The next thing we need to do is remove the pulley on the transmission but we need to keep the shaft from spinning. I'm going to use some locking pliers on the shaft along with something to keep from damaging it. I'll then use my impact but it's not necessary. After the nut is loose, remove it followed by a washer, both parts of the pulley and finally a large spacer. There is one more washer but I didn't realize it till later on. After that we can then remove the bracket for the cable. Once that's done, to get the transmission out of the deck, we need to remove the height adjusting brackets which are held to the deck by two bolts with nuts. Now I thought I could get away with just taking off one side, unfortunately there's not enough room for the shaft that had the pulley on it to clear the deck, so that means we need to take off the other side as well. Once the other bracket is off, we can now remove the transmission from the deck for an inspection and the first thing we see isn't very promising. These are the output shaft bushings and as you can see they are severely worn and need to be replaced. If I bought these online after taxes they would be around $20. We can also see that one of the keyway slots has become a lot wider than the other but it will still work. So I don't think we need to replace the shaft just yet. Next I'm going to open the transmission and clean what I can so we can take it apart for a good inspection. Once I've cleaned the best I can I'll then separate the shaft from the case. If you're wondering what I'm using to clean the transmission with, it's old stale gasoline I've kept from draining fuel tanks, mostly from generators. You can use brake clean if you want, but stale gasoline works extremely well on old grease. So here's the pinion gear and as you can see it's normally all black but you can see the wear pattern on it by where the black coating is missing. Now this part also needs to be replaced and it would cost around $13. Now the beveled gear looks to be in decent shape however if you take a good look at all the teeth you can see that some of them are worn off at the top of the teeth. If we were going to replace this part it'd be around $28. Now I could put a shim between the pinion gear and the top bearing and what this would do would be to move the pinion gear closer to the beveled gear to make up for some of that wear but this really doesn't fix the problem it's just a bandage. Would it work? Probably but since the wear is this severe I couldn't guarantee how well it would work or how long it would last. Don't forget how much play there is in the bushings as well. There's just so much play that the teeth might not be making good contact in certain positions. If we slide the bushings away from the gear we find yet more bad news. Not only did the bushings wear away but the shaft is worn as well. That means we need to replace the shaft and it's about $68. That means if we wanted to replace every single part in the transmission aside from the bearing it would cost $129 which I hate to say is just too much money. I'd rather put that money towards a brand new mower instead. 
but instead of buying all the components separately, I decided to buy a brand new transmission instead, and the best part is, it was only $59 after taxes, which is a really good deal. Now, I don't know how much money is too much money for a new transmission, but for this price, it seemed like a good way to get this mower working the way it was supposed to from the factory. Now, I wish I could have just shimmed the pinion gear and only bought two new bushings, but I wanted to make sure this transmission lasted more than a few seasons. After checking that it is the same part I just took off, it's finally time to reinstall the new transmission in the deck. So why would I even bother dealing with the transmission? Now most people wouldn't bother and just use it as a push mower, especially since it's only front wheel drive versus a rear drive system, which offers a lot more traction. Now since this mower was designed to be a self propel, I think it's worth more with a working drive. The other thing is that this mower as a whole is in great shape. The deck is not rusted through, the tires have plenty of tread on them, and even though the engine isn't a 10 out of 10, it's still got plenty of life left in it. So in my mind, for less than $60, I can get this free mower back to working order. Besides, I enjoy working on projects like this as it gives me a great sense of accomplishment when I get done with them. So I just ran into a problem. It looks like there are no threads in the holes on top of this transmission for this bracket. Now the original bolts are these triangular ones and they're designed to cut new threads. However, I don't want to risk it with used bolts. So instead, I'm going to find out what the original bolts pitch is and then check it with the original transmission and finally get the right tap to put new threads in the holes. If you don't have a tap and die set, you can find them online for less than $30. You might be able to find a set cheaper at your local hardware store if you wait for a sale or use a coupon. My choice would be to borrow a set from a friend who has lots of tools. Don't worry, I'm sure they'll have more than one set and they'll let you borrow the cheap set. Once the holes have been tapped, we can then swap over that last washer followed by the spacer and then the bracket for the self-propelled cable and its two bolts. We can then reconnect the self-propelled cable to the deck followed by both parts of the pulley, the washer, and finally the nut. Don't forget to lock up the shaft, that way you can turn the nut on top of the pulley to tighten it. I'm sorry I didn't film taking that last washer off, I just didn't realize it was even there. Once the bolt is tight, try and move either the plates for the pulley and make sure that they're not loose. After that, I'm going to check and make sure that the pulley is spinning the shaft like it's supposed to, which it is. We can now finally start putting all the washers and retaining clips back on the ends of the shaft along with the drive gears. Now, there's supposed to be a wheel cover that's installed after the retaining clip, but it was never on the mower to begin with, so I think the previous owner took them off and forgot to reinstall them. I think they had them off so they could see if the gears were making good contact with the teeth on the wheels. They are kind of necessary because they prevent sticks and debris from getting between the gears. I think I have a set of these lying around, but I won't worry about it right now. I will try to get them on before the next mowing season, though. I've also been informed in the comments that I can grease the keyway using the hole at the end of the shaft. I just have to use a grease gun for a chainsaw. Now this will keep me from having to take everything apart to grease the keyway. After the final retaining clip has been installed, I can now replace the wheel and then do the same thing for the other side. Since I've already shown you how to do it on this side, I'm not going to show the process twice. Once the wheel is back on, it should spin in the forward direction and you should be able to hear the clicking noises from the key. If you spin it backwards, the pulley should spin in the opposite direction that it normally spins. That means it's working like it's supposed to. Also, when installing the belt guard, there are two slots where the belt is supposed to go, so make sure you install it correctly, otherwise you'll damage the cover when you activate the self-propel. The last thing to do is to reinstall the two screws for the belt guard, then replace the air filter, put some oil in the engine, and then add a splash of gasoline in the tank so we can do a test start. The only reason I took the air filter off was just in case there was any gasoline in the bowl for the carb, I didn't want to soak the filter with it. Another reason why this transmission might not be working is that the roll pin that connects the beveled gear to the shaft is broken. If that's the case, just knock out what's left of the old pin and then replace the roll pin.
so the engine was smoking a little bit at the beginning and that usually happens when I take mowers off the table. Some of the oil will make its way past the rings and into the combustion chamber to be burnt off when it first starts. Otherwise, the transmission seems to be working very well as to be expected with it being brand new. There's only a few small things I need to address like the bowl gasket for the carb and of course replacing the wheel covers but all in all, it seems to be starting mowing and driving like it's supposed to. So my question is, would you have replaced the transmission or just left it as a free mower without a working self-propel? Personally, for me, as long as I can get it working for a decent price, I'll try and fix it. However, if the transmission had been over $100, I doubt I would have replaced it and instead waited for a parts mower to take its transmission instead. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions, and I hope to see you in the next video.